Good evening, friends, or good morning, good afternoon, whenever this video finds you. Uh, my name is Grace. This is the channel for the Intuitive Lens. I help people understand and utilize astrology to support life change, provide guidance, improve intuition. Um, when we know what energies are collectively available to us, we can better align ourselves with the universe and navigate life with a bit more ease. This week we're talking about the week of the full moon in Aquarius. At the time of this recording, it is the last day of July the 31st, Monday. Yeah, Monday night. This energy is covering this week, um, but there's always going to be some overlap. So think about the weekend that just passed and the weekend that is forthcoming when I tell you about this week. The feature of this week, obviously, is the supermoon in Aquarius. It's happening at 9 degrees. If you've ever done a class or a workshop with me, then you'll know what your house cusps are. And I want you to check which house does Aquarius rule in your chart. That house is currently activated for you. Otherwise, Aquarius rules the 11th house of society. I guess it's called society. 11th house of society. It's the house of shared human interest, innovation, but also things like rebellion. Um, so Aquarius is really a misunderstood sign, energetically speaking. It's the sign of the water bearer, and yes, it's, yet it's not a water sign at all. It's an air sign. So when we think of air as the fastest moving element, we think of lots of information Aquarius is a fixed sign, and as such, you may wonder, how can Aquarius be so society-changing as a fixed sign? I know that's the question that I usually have about it, and so I might urge you to think about Aquarius this way. Any fixed sign is just sort of deep within its element. It has a certain mastery over that element. It helps any fixed sign helps us to better understand the times that we are in. And as we know, Aquarius energy is something that drives us forward. So it being the year of the chariot, um, in a lot of personal readings, one-on-one -on -one readings, the chariot is reappearing. To no surprise, the chariot is the card of the year. 2 plus 2 plus 3, 2023, is 7. The seventh card is the chariot which is also representative of the astrological sign Cancer. And the Cancer new moon is what is leading us into this Aquarius full moon. So all connected, all relevant. I feel like that's a message I've been getting a lot recently is that everything is indeed connected more so than we think. So another very important transit for this week is Pluto square the nodes. Pluto has been is making its transition from Capricorn into Aquarius. There's Aquarius again. It's very important that we understand what Aquarius is here to teach us. And I think that, think about how your life wants to be revolutionized. What are you willing to let go of to make space for that new thing to be brought in? Pluto square the nodes. Nodes are the, I should do a separate video on the nodes entirely, but the nodes are karmic points. They represent the sun and the moon. And so whenever we feel like we're off our path or not in alignment with the universe or just in our life in general, we look to the nodes in the astrological birth chart to give us some guidance. Last week I talked about, or was it two weeks ago, when the nodes moved collectively um, is in the current placement of the nodes is in Aries and Libra. We're talking about the me versus we dynamic. And I don't want to um, miss out on the opportunity to tell you how much the Leo and Aquarius axis feels so much like, like Aries and Libra as well. Because what we have on the Aquarius and Leo axis. Leo, by the way, is the next new moon and we are in Leo season. Venus is retrograde in Leo. This is all relevant. It's all connected. Aquarius was the 11th house of society. It's like us. 
This is for us. We're all in this together. And Leo is the, look at me. Look how special I am. What are my gifts? What makes me unique? What, what makes me willing to stand out? Where is your creativity, your boisterousness? And how do you use that for the greater good in the collective? Aquarius Leo. You know, and sometimes it's not, don't worry about not having particularly big dreams, like you don't have to change the world. Remember that influencing and just being yourself, shining your light, your specific gift, no matter how big or small, with just the people around you, showing up for those people, for that community, is also part of this. Um, so society doesn't have to be, you know, citywide, countrywide, worldwide. Change really does start, um, start and end, honestly. Does it ever really end? But it starts at this, like, local level. I like this um, local roots, global heart sort of idea and mentality to this. So anyway, back to Pluto and the nodes. Because Pluto is the energy of transformation, things falling away, things wanting to change. And when it's square the nodes, this is your truth being stripped bare. Pluto will reduce anything to its essence. And so if we square the nodes, and the nodes are our life's compass, we're going to be able to see directly into the matter of certain things. And... With Mercury in Virgo, there might be a lot of messages coming in. There might be a lot of communication. Aquarius, again, the air sign. We might be learning or discovering things. Communications may be happening. Let me read off my page of the notes that I took about this week just for some extra themes to look out for in our reading. And then um, we'll just we'll get into the reading. Oh, and I also have a special illuminated love oracle card for you today since it is the first week of a new month. At the same time that the full moon peaks, we have Mars trying Jupiter. This is about expansion, taking risk, cutting right through to the chase. Like I was saying, Mars and Jupiter, this is feels this feels easy, but at the same time it's a supermoon, so this is a sensitive thing. This isn't just an easy thing. This is a be scared and brave at the same time thing. Mercury opposite Saturn. That's a reality check if I ever heard of one. Saturn, or Saturn is the teacher planet. It's our lessons. It also rules time. Mercury is how we communicate in our, in our impressions, all of our, all of our habits. So this transit is telling us, asking us, are we doing the things and are we, are, we, are we practicing what we preach? Are we walking the walk? Are we talking the talk? That's your reality check. And if not, and if you want to move past some block, something that you feel has been keeping you in a place that you're ready to move on from, you have to be very honest with yourself about these things at this time. Full moon is about releasing things. You know, you can you can do this work now, do yourself a little ritual, write down, write a letter, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, and then burn it. Mm, ideally tonight. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get this by then. But anytime you do it, it would be fine. Anytime you do it, it's for you. It's not for anybody else. It's not, you know. Um, another theme that came up for me recently was this idea of mechanical time versus human time and how um, we try to make humans work and uh, adhere to mechanical time. And I know that that's largely how the world works. But if we're really leaning into Aquarius and saying, 
hey, this doesn't work all the time. And actually, sometimes it's quite harmful if we think of, you know, white supremacy culture and this need for ur constant urgency for things to be done a certain way and at a certain time and at a certain pace. It's really dehumanizing. And I mean, just look at the industry, the film industry and the strikes that are going on. I feel like the film industry has oftentimes been at the forefront of many changes. It was the first industry to come up with creative protocols for the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's a lot of innovation appearing in different places. And Aquarius asks us to say, asks us to witness and to acknowledge when something can work differently and also acknowledge the Leo aspect of this, which is its opposite axis, how certain things can work for certain groups and for certain people and it doesn't have to work for you. You don't have to benefit from every change that occurs, but as long as it's helping the people it's meant to help, we need to honor that. We need to be able to allow other people to receive the things that they need when they need them. And if we're not listening to the voices of the people who need the most help, then I'm not really sure what any of this is for anyway. So Pluto, Pluto is retrograding in Capricorn right now. So we're going to be seeing from now until next January, a lot of these old paradigms showing up. And this is our opportunity to see them differently. And so with our truth being exposed, laid bare, this is asking us to come into some alignment with this new paradigm, okay? Um, I don't want to say too much more just because it's a lengthy discussion and there is no discussion happening here because I'm just talking into a camera, but um, some things to think about for you. Important conversations, yes. Rewrite healthier behavioral patterns, heal generational wounds, very important work. What is your essence? <laughs> what did I write? What does it mean to be human? Yeah. What is our essence? Since we're talking about Aquarius, not just what is your essence, but what is our essence? What does it mean to be human? Good questions. Reframe past conditioning. Change your life for the better. Do it. I dare you. Do it. All right, let's get into a little reading. Um, today's card, or this month's card, the month of August, is receptivity. Be free from any illusion of separation. Giving and receiving are one act. When you receive, it is an intimate act of love and devotion. You bless others with opportunities to share their love and shine their light. Be the gift of love you are and receive. Be open to truly receive. That's beautiful. Be open to truly receive. When I think about that, I think about how many times I'll like pull cards for people or, you know, deliver some message, do some sort of reading with them or just some feedback session and they'll ask the same question over and over again. It happened a lot this past weekend. We want to know the, we want to know the same answer, but maybe deliver it in a different way. How can we hear better? How can we receive better? Hmm. Pulling an oracle card from Wisdom of the Oracle, we have breathe, mending, no place like home. So, no place like home. I love that energy. Obviously, this idea of healing generational wounds is very prominent here. Which hand am I? It's prominent. Breathing is about being present. Mending, clearly. Mending and fixing relationships, especially ones that are close to home or that feel like home. That's beautiful. Oh. 
What else can we know about this week? If you're still watching, I want to say thank you so much for being here. It makes me really happy to make these videos, to study astrology and the tarot. It's helped my life tremendously. I hope that it can help you. So if you're still here, just want to say thank you so much for supporting. Don't forget to like the video or subscribe. Share with a friend. Underneath, Seven of Cups, Neptunian energy, and up. This is paralysis analysis. Too many options, not really sure what to do. Also, possibly afraid of getting hurt again. Okay. And yet, you feel deeply connected to something here. The High Priestess. Somebody reminded me over the weekend, I was on retreat, of the Virgo aspects of the High Priestess. In the modern witch tarot, in another deck, she's holding a laptop. So we're reminded that we have wisdom in, innately within us, wisdom. We can't always explain connections that we have with people, connections that we have with the universe, the way that our senses sometimes don't always work the way we're told that they do and are supposed to. Think even about experiencing sensitivity at this time, what that could mean, how that can, how sensory overload or sensory overwhelm can actually provide other information for us to glean about a situation or even about ourselves. Clearly, there's some sort of fear here of um, of getting hurt, and there's or there's been some sort of hurt. I don't know if this is related to family, although I do see here. This is the last card I'll pull. Is the Four of Wands, so either some large commitment or family thing um, that has been hurting. It's time to address that with this Aquarius full moon. The Nine of Cups is the card on top. Two of Cups in reverse. Five of Swords. Knight of Wands. I wish you could see the cards. I know that that's something you guys like. I'm going to work on getting another camera or something to do that. Um, Knight of Wands in reverse. Eight of Wands in reverse. Eight. Ace of Wands in reverse. Nine of Wands in reverse. Nine of Swords, and the Page of Swords in reverse. So the central theme here is mental entrapment. I think that we can get ourselves into a place where our minds are our greatest prison. It's We stop ourselves from getting to you know, pass the edge, like we're, we're just so close to getting something and then we stop. Suddenly there's a, a, a lack of enthusiasm when you get closer. When you realize that what you want is actually attainable, we stop. That's what's showing here. There's a wish that you have. You're not really being honest about this wish. Um, Whenever I see the five of swords here, this is old this is old paradigm showing up. Winners and losers. No such thing. There shouldn't be such a thing as winners or losers. Why does somebody have to lose in order for you to win? I think this is a very immature sort of energy. Um, it feels at least manipulative or it feels at least as though emotions may be getting the better of us and causing us to do, you know, us. Us can be you, us can be the other person. So take it how it resonates. I do see that there is another person here. Somebody who is extremely, you and this person have totally different lessons. You feel, you may feel that you are 
in alignment and on your path. And when something comes to take you away from that path, your version of this could be, um, I'm angry or, or anger or bitterness or like extremely exhausting. Something takes you out. Your version of this is the fire element. So think about the destructive qualities of fire and how quickly can burn something. So if anything, your, your, your state of um, contentment and your, your soft spot, your soft spot, your comfort zone, right, is easily um, influenced. It's fragile. Okay, maybe that's why you're not taking that next step to address whatever this hurt is. Okay, that would make sense. But still, there's something here, some kind of connection here that wants to be mended. So yeah, the Oracle card is saying breathe, like breathe through it. Realize you're here. No place like home. Home is planet Earth. We're all here. We're home. For this other person, may not see the way you see things exactly. And their lesson is more mental, more about the nervous system, anxiety, mental entrapments. Okay. So it may feel at this time that there isn't um, a way to see eye to eye. It's like There might be, a, I think, a separation here. I don't really see beyond it right now. I don't know who this is for. Um, it just sort of feels very sad, honestly. Um, Page of Swords in reverse. The Page of Swords is the hero card. It's like... I know what I must do. I've got to do this, but it's in the reverse. So it's really saying like, I don't, an Ace of Wands in reverse. It's like, I don't have the energy and I don't have the words. I don't have, just don't have it. Let's get some closing cards here. Three of Cups, holiday time. I'm not sure what, uh, Three of Cups. Thank you so much. Okay, things may move faster around a holiday time. If this is about wanting to receive a message, it'll be around a holiday or some celebration. Patience. Patience is required. Okay, now you're just being ridiculous. These cards here. It's like two, two of wands and four of swords. Um, make a plan so that whatever moves you decide to make feel sustainable to you. Um, don't go into a situation with guns blazing. Don't take things personally at this time. This is a super sensitive time. We have two super moons this month. And this full moon in Aquarius starting this week is the beginning of that. If this was a personal reading, I would go into way more depth. But I'm going to leave this here for YouTubes. This is definitely for somebody out there. I'm not sure who it is. If you want to send me a message or um, anything like that, you can. Or leave me a comment. Um, I love you so much. And I hope to see you next week for the next video.